Welcome to the introduction to the 2014 Child Development Supplement. To begin, let's go over what you can expect to learn. This tutorial has three parts. We'll begin with an overview of the 2014 Child Development Supplement, or CDS 2014, followed by an overview of the study design and components, and concluding with an explanation of the data structure. We'll start with an overview of CDS 2014. For a comparison to the original CDS 1 through 3, collected from 1997 to 2007, and the ongoing CDS, collected in 2014 and beyond, please see the web tutorial, Child Development Supplement, comparing the original and ongoing studies. CDS 2014 collected information on over 4,300 children from over 2,500 households. All primary caregivers, or PCGs, as well as adolescent children aged 12 to 17, were interviewed individually by telephone, and half of the households were selected for an additional in-person home interview. A total of eight interview components were available for completion, depending on the age of the children and in-home sample selection status. Sample eligibility and composition for the ongoing CDS differs from the original CDS collected from 1997 to 2007. CDS 2014 included all children in the family unit aged 0 to 17 years old. All children born or adopted into PSID families since 1997 were eligible to be included in the 2014 wave if their family completed the 2013 core interview. Future waves of the ongoing CDS will include children born since the prior wave in order to create a steady state panel that will be population representative of children in the cross section while also allowing for longitudinal analysis. Next, let's continue to a brief discussion of the study design and the components of the interview. All PCGs and adolescent children aged 12 to 17 were eligible to be interviewed by telephone. Each PCG completed a 75-minute interview about her or himself, the household, and each child, and children 12 to 17 provided an interview about their own experiences, attitudes, and feelings. Saliva samples and administrative linkage consent forms were either sent in by mail or collected in person for members of the in-home supplement. Both the data from administrative linkages and the DNA sequencing from the collected saliva will be available for analysis under restricted use contract in the future. Half of the eligible families were selected for the in-home supplement, where both the PCGs and children were able to complete additional interview components. Children aged 8 to 11 gave their own in-person child interview, and the Woodcock-Johnson revised tests of achievement were given to children and primary caregivers. Children from families included in the in-home supplement were also able to complete time diaries. Two days, one weekday and one weekend day, were randomly assigned to all children in the family, and 24-hour time diaries were completed by each child or by their PCG on their behalf. These diaries catalog the time and duration of all primary and secondary activities that a child participated in on the assigned days and also recorded who else was present during the activity and where it took place. Physical height and weight measurements were also collected in person with standardized scales and measurement techniques. Please note, however, that self-reported height and weight are also available for PCGs as well as children who did not complete the in-home supplement. In addition to the family roster, which maps out each household's residence in terms of their relationship to the CDS child, several interviews are conducted. Primary caregivers were eligible for the household interview, which collected information about their home environment and neighborhood, child rearing and parenting styles, psychological distress and well-being, as well as economic strain and food security. The PCG was also eligible to answer a question for each child in the CDS, which covered questions pertaining to the child's health and well-being, personality and behavior, educational aspirations and expectations, as well as expenditures and savings. Children ages 8 to 11 and 12 to 17 were asked different sets of age-specific questions, though many overlapped and were in reference to race and ethnicity, school, health, relationships with family and friends, use of technology, employment and financial behavior, as well as sensitive topics collected using interactive voice response technology. For more information on the content of the interviews, please see the questionnaires and documentation located on the Questionnaires and Supporting Documentation page of the PSID's website, psid.org. With many components and several individuals being interviewed in each family unit, CDS 2014 has a unique data structure. Though there are eight possible components in CDS 2014, not everyone was eligible for each component, nor were they required to complete any one component. All primary caregivers were eligible to complete a single PCG household interview and a separate PCG child interview for each of their children. Children's eligibility to complete their own child interview 
depended on their age and whether their family was selected for the in-home supplement. Assessments and time diaries were collected for those in the in-home supplement, where assessments were obtained for those three and older, including primary caregivers, and time diaries were collected for all children. All PCGs and children aged 5 and up were eligible for the collection of the saliva sample. Consent for administrative linkages was also sought. PCGs were asked for consent to collect their own and all children's birth record information and to collect school records for all children between the ages of 8 and 17. The number of records associated with each study component is not dependent on other components. So there are some families who have data on the PCG child file, but not on the child interview file, and so on. Let's look at that now. When downloading datasets from the PSID's online data center, the files will be identified differently depending on which files your variables come from. For the ongoing CDS collected in 2014 and beyond, all files except the standalone PCG household file will also be identified at the child level, meaning that the 1968 ID and person number on this file will be that of the child in CDS 14. However, if you download variables that are only from the PCG household file, you will get a data set which is identified at the PCG level, meaning that the 1968 ID and person number on that file will be that of the PCG in CDS 2014. Please note that if multiple CDS files are downloaded, including the PCG household file in the ongoing CDS, it will still be identified at the child level, with a separate standalone file being delivered at the PCG level, containing only the PCG variables with the suffix PCG14. Once you've made your variable selections and downloaded your data from the data center, you'll receive a page like this. Let's go over each of the files and how they will be used. For this example, data from the ongoing CDS collected in 2014, as well as core 2013 data are present in the download. There are two data files and one map file that will need to be utilized, depending on your specific research methods. The first data file, beginning with a J and without a suffix, contains all data that is not contained in the CDS 2014 PCG household file and is identified at the child level, while the second data file, beginning with a J and containing the suffix PCG14, contains only the data from the CDS 2014 PCG household file and is identified at the PCG level. The map file, beginning with an M and containing the suffix CDS14, allows data users to map the data file from the ongoing CDS, collected in 2014 and beyond, back to the core PSID files. The identifiers can be used to merge the CDS data file with individual data on the PCGs in order to obtain a more complete view of the children and their families. It also serves a second purpose. Since the PCG household level variables are delivered on a separate data file and are identified at the PCG level, the CDS 14 map is also used to merge the PCG 2014 data file together with the main data file that contains all other variables and is identified at the child level. All CDS 2014 data downloads are accompanied by the household roster data file that appears in a separate compressed zip file. The household roster file contains a separate record for every individual living in a CDS child's household at the time of the screening interview. This file may be used to obtain basic demographic information about all CDS household members and to identify the individual who is the child's primary caregiver. It also contains unique person identifiers to match each CDS household member to their individual level data in the PSID core. Please note that if any variables are selected from the original CDS, collected from 1997 to 2007, in addition to the ongoing CDS, collected in 2014 and beyond, that map will be provided as well, with the prefix M and without a suffix. This web tutorial was produced by Nora Insulera, Narayan Sastri, and Paula Fombi, with funding from the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. This ends the web tutorial on the 2014 Child Development Supplement. Comments and questions may be sent to psidhelp at umich.edu.